Okay, yeah, so we're talking. Uh, how are you doing, Andrew? Um, um, do I don't hear I don't actually, I'm, I don't, don't want to know. Um, of course you don't. <laughs> so <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know how you got suckered into trying to answer that. Um, but <laughs> have we have we met? <laughs> Much to my chagrin. <laughs> uh, so uh, I just uh, thought this would be uh, one of those moments where it would be good to turn on the mic on uh, one of these conversations. Uh, so this is not a show. Uh, we're just talking here. But I'm, uh, I'm just putting out our private conversation for other people to listen to. And perhaps uh, it will kick off uh a conversation a thing that i would like to talk about with people or at least conversations that i would like to read from other people also the current thread um is over a thousand uh right now and things just get unwieldy uh when they get that long so you know uh, guys gals when you when you hear this conversation it's not a show stop it there's no shows when you hear this conversation, stop posting on the one that says the view from the skeptic where I said that I was leaving and everyone ignored me and move over to this one. <laughs> I will apply a, a link and you can just keep on nattering about whatever it is you're nattering about. Uh, and maybe even you will uh, have some comments about this conversation that you're about to hear. So I just want you to know it, it's just probably worth pointing out that I've seen leaving before and it doesn't look like this. <laughs> just just suck, suck my Pacific rim. Um, <laughs> so what we're <laughs> racist. <laughs> God. <laughs> just, just, just shoot me. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, uh, Beelzebub, I, I let you in. You you can come in now. It's got to be better. It's got to be better. I still feel fine. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm still fine from that. And uh, I was telling um, my wife about the, the show where because we were watching Supernatural uh, because once you start watching Supernatural, you never stop because it never comes to an end. It right, just, you're, on, you're on season what 84 or something now. thereabouts <laughs> it went forever it just <laughs> keeps going um but we were we were watching i think it was that uh and someone was trying to invoke uh lucifer and i just had a laugh because the invocation uh that brian and i did was much better it was so much better um than that amateur crap that uh, they were attempting on uh, on Supernatural, and and ours didn't work, so I didn't. <laughs> but I, they didn't really want theirs to work. It's just TV. It's supposed. Uh, <laughs> um, look, we have better knitting uh, to get to than than Supernatural, hey, uh, hey, which means hey, pretty much hey, any knitting, buddy, buddy. We never get into the subject of the thing that we're talking about right off the bat. There, there's, a, there's a mandatory 20 minutes of wasted time before getting to the topic. So oh, stop, I, oh, stop man, trying to pretend uh, to the people that we have any kind of structure. Oh, no, they, no, no, no they've, they've heard us before. <laughs> sure, that was, well, we'll, actually, we'll get to know, the point but, eventually, guys. OK, I, I mean, um, look, if, if you were them, Seriously, audience, I'm I'm sorry for doing this to you, but but if you were them and you heard the two of us, would you actually would you actually hang around and not take advantage of the stop button? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I don't have a pay model? I don't. <laughs> <there's>... <laughs> See, you know, uh, it's not it's not like they're they're being forced into this it's you know it's it's not like uh it's not like uh jewish circumcision of infants there uh, oh so nope. oh, not uh, going there not too, too soon too, probably probably too soon for that <laughs> okay. uh look guys uh seriously i'm gonna open up a patreon right now and uh, i'm gonna get some super follows here 
Uh, and so it, it's going to cost you $5 per super follow. And if I get $100, then we will jump straight to the point. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to suffer through the uh, opening monologue of nonsense. You're going to suffer after the monologue, too, just so you know. So <laughs> just, don't think that the $5 prevents the suffering. It just decreases the amount. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't see anyone donating right now. OK, I tell you what. Well, <laughs> We'll go. We'll go straight. I don't know how this works. Uh, do the, is, it, is money just supposed to appear in my bank account? Um, <laughs> I've been waiting for a long time for that. Have you? Okay. All I right. have faith, though. I, I do have faith that uh, money is again problem problematic. Uh, we might get you. We might get you faith. So here's the here's the subject that I wanted to um, talk about, uh, guys. Uh, it's a kind of a muddy mixture of a lot of things that have been uh, going on in my life and things I've been reading and watching. And um, you know, I, I try to keep up with um, you know, the latest religious stuff uh, that happens, which probably makes me far more of a student of Christianity than most Christians. Um, but that's fine. I <clears throat> will occasionally even break out a Bible and read something uh, if a conversation uh, strikes my interest and look at uh, look at it theologically, um, and then not post anything about it on the board because nobody actually cares about theology around here. So, um, yeah, such is my life, uh, and. The thing that I wanted to talk about today is uh, I wanted to see if we couldn't get to the heart of um, some of the disagreements. It's nice to talk about some of the details of you know why Christians and atheists disagree, but honestly, we're just talking around uh, the real stuff. And I don't I don't mean to say that uh, we don't have real feelings about this stuff because we do, but uh, these are like h2 bullet points underneath the real problem uh and so today uh i don't want to talk about the bullet points i want to talk about the the actual heading uh in this uh and that is um the greater problem with religions and gods that keep me from taking Christianity or any other religion too seriously. And in fact, even if I took it seriously, at, at this moment in time in, in my um, mental life, I would not be able to accept it. Uh, and in fact, even if I were convinced that God was real and that Christianity was true, even the version of Christian, whatever your version of Christianity is, if I if I uh, were convinced it is true, I I am so made that I don't think I could uh, follow it at this point in my life. I don't I don't think I am capable of doing it. And so that uh, that would suck for me if it were true. <laughs> and it's it's I'm not sitting around saying, well, I want it to be untrue. Uh, now. I do want it to be untrue because I think it's horrible, but that's not that's not a problem. I can deal with all kinds of things I don't want to be true that are true, <laughs> right? I, I I live life every day in a, in a universe where all kinds of horrible things are true that I don't want to be true. So I don't. Whereas I don't want Christianity to be true. That's not the problem. That's why I. That's not why I wouldn't worship this God. Or, or join this religion. And so I, I just wanted to take some time. Andrew and I talk about this kind of stuff every now and then. Uh, and I wanted to put this um, up on the board and see if we can get some um, some greater conversation around it. And I pulled up five bullet points. Um, Andrew uh, has no bullet points because he didn't do any research. Um, well, you know. this isn't a show. It's no, it's not a show. It's just a conversation. We're just talking. Right. I mean, look, folks, how many of you put bullet points together for your conversations? 
that you are randomly having that aren't podcasts or shows. Why am I saying folks? There aren't supposed to be any folks. This is <laughs> well, you see, here's the thing. That's I think in bullet points, as you well know, because I am a writer. I'm not sure that's what you think in, but, but okay. <laughs> I, I, look, I've been doing this job for long enough, and I've been doing this particular kind of writing that I do professionally long enough. Um, it's very formulaic. And so uh, I actually... I think in bullet points <laughs> when I talk casually. I, I usually don't write them down, but I do Some, think in that way. This this gets scarier. But do we have, do we have a topic? Because this is, this gets scarier by the moment. <laughs> Were you not paying attention when I just laid out the topic? Do I need to do this again? Uh, oh, bullet point don't. number one, uh, and uh, it's not one of Andrew's bullet points because he doesn't have any. <laughs> Um, we'll see. We'll see. I, I may. Okay. Uh, that's, I, might, I might make one up. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> no, this is not in any particular order, by the way. I, I did this just before I hit record. Um, but, okay, here's this is one of the big ones for me. Um, when you, when you um, think about gods in religion, even in popular fiction, uh, sci-fi, fantasy. Uh, it doesn't matter whether the author is uh, Christian or atheist. Uh, some of these same things, these same things come up again. So it's hard for us as humans to even imagine a god or a religion that doesn't fall uh, under some of these problems. So one of the big problems for me is that we can't understand what it is gods want. Um, this is kind of a big one for me. Um, I, if if the Christian God is real, what does he want from you? Do you know? Because I don't know. Um, I don't know what I can naturally offer that this God doesn't already have or that he couldn't get a better version of by just making it himself and so um there's always this this cloud around a god's motives for doing anything and his motives for wanting you to do anything and you whether you've done it right or not uh because you don't actually know what he wants andrew what is what is what do gods want okay so so i do have a couple of thoughts here. I refuse to call them bullet points because now there's there's been a thing made about bullet points. And I refuse. Well, sure. But, so give, let me let me have your first H two. <laughs> okay, okay. But there's no bullet point before. Sure, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to compromise that much. <laughs> okay, all right. So, um, when I was a Christian, um, and um, the Folks, the folks around the boards know that um, I'm, I'm not proud of those days. Uh, and, and I'm not even saying there's a, a kind of Christianity that somebody couldn't be proud of, but I didn't have that kind of Christianity. And I'm not proud of those days. But when I was a Christian, the thing that I thought God wanted was for me to obey, uh, and, and now I'm just going to put this in all caps, even though there are no bullet points. I thought God wanted me to obey the Bible. So right? you, you, <laughs> won't, you won't acknowledge bullet points, but you're gonna say things in all caps. <laughs> yes, that, that's, that's exactly, I'm going to say things in all caps. That's right, I'm going to shout it. Uh, so that, that I really did. And, and of course, the funny thing is that eventually I realized the, the Bible that God wanted me uh, to obey was just my mental map of the of the Bible, right? I had no way of determining, even even presuming that there was a God. All right, but why would God no, want you to obey the Bible? What, I mean, wh what? Wh why? <laughs> why did? It, why was he? Why would he want that? <laughs> because for whatever reason, the whole duty of man is. is is servitude, right? Fear God and uh, as for commandments. Right. As for me and my house, 
I will follow the Lord. Right? This, this is what I thought. And, and I didn't have to go any deeper than that. And, and, in, and in some ways, uh, all Christians are taught not to go deeper than that. And, uh, but it became disturbing to me that what I had in terms of, of biblical interpretation was not the place. It was just the map. But, but I thought that that's what God wanted, was for me to follow the Bible in all caps. Now, I'm sorry, go, go ahead. There's, uh, there's, a, um, there's another half of that, but I, I hear some thought there. So, so go ahead. Well, yeah, no, it, it's, <laughs> you hear the thought because I, I haven't sprayed any WD-40 in my ears yet. Um, it's all packed. <laughs> so um, can, can I recommend a lighter? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can recommend uh, it. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. It's It was your mental map of what the Bible said and what you thought God wanted. But there are a lot of things in the Bible that God doesn't want. And so let's say I took that as given that God wants you to obey the Bible. I don't, I don't know that that is a given in some Christian circles, but let's just take that as a given from our Christian circle. The Bible's full of things that you're not supposed to obey. So why do we even have the Hebrew scriptures? Um, if, if Christians are telling me today that all of that crap uh, before Matthew really should just be kind of deprecated to the point of nothing, uh, what's it there for? Because it's confusing to me. Um, if, if the Ten Commandments was a list of things he wanted, just write that and be done with it. Why do we, why do we have all of the rest of this stuff about, you know, conquering lands and raping little girls who are too young to have sex with men? Why do we, why do we have all of this instruction about, uh, you know, how to deal with your slaves? Um, you know, if we're not supposed to look at that and learn something about who this God is, why not just tell us clearly, you know, in three pages or so, what it is he wants us to do. And that would be one, one time written down for all time. What, you know, if, if that's what he wanted us to do, because we have a Bible, it could be a lot shorter and a lot clearer. Sure. Um, one of the things that I discovered, um, it's you know so i'm a i'm a computer guy right by uh by background and and one of the we things call those that, androids uh, well sure. you know on on kinder days that's what people call me uh, this is mostly what they call me uh so one of the things that that i found interesting about the the jewish approach uh was, you know we, we've got these 400 and whatever number laws, right? And, and this is really what God's trying to tell us. Well, with all the stories and, and all of the missives and all of the implications, right? We'll, we'll distill those. And, and here are our laws. We have, we have 400 plus of these. And if you, if you can get those into your head, if you can follow those things, you're a good Jew, right? So that's not, I'm not being racist. So it's, uh, uh, if you've been watching the boards, uh, not using, using Jew as a pejorative, uh, Israelite, whatever. So, but you're, you're doing pretty well if you can follow these things. Right? It's, it's pretty good. Except that we know that, that just these kinds of, of engines, when you write software, right? It, you, it's, it's hard to write an engine that's just a bunch of if-then statements. Uh, if, if you meet this circumstance, then you do this thing, right? Sort of, sort of how we do law. Uh, but it's hard to write software that catches all of the possible cases of interaction. Uh, and, and coders have, have given up largely on that kind of, of programming. We need systems that, that learn, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and so I, always, I often thought, that as a Christian, if I could, if I could just, if I could just 
distill the New Testament down into something like those laws, you know, a glossary of what God wanted with, with, a, with a nice table of contents and a nice index. So in an encounter circumstance, I, I, can, I can just flip to the index and find, find the applicable principle. Then, then that was, you know, that was sim- that would make my life simpler. But somehow it, it, you, you can't do it. You can't do that. Well, you see, it seems like the first attempt to do that was the 10 laws. Um, you know, here's, here's 10 laws, do this and you're, you're okay. And then they realize, oh no, that's, that's way too vague uh, because real life is messy and there are lots of situations that have to be adjudicated. Okay, um, 430 laws, do these 430 laws and um, you're, um, you're okay. Well, uh, frankly, that's too many. <laughs> no one, no one can keep up with that. Um, no, no one, no one knows all of the laws in their legal code. Hey, the, the people who work on these laws for a living, you know, are legislators don't know all of the laws in the books. They have to have interns to look them up for them. The judges uh, at the Supreme Court have interns upon interns upon interns to look up law <laughs> to see what it is. We don't stand a chance at, at knowing and understanding all the laws. And so at 10, it, it was apparently too simplistic. At 400 and whatever, is apparently too complicated. And besides, it at that at that amount of laws no one can keep them everybody is going to be an outlaw when you have too many laws there's there's simply no way uh to keep them all and so it seems like the whole enterprise of having some set of laws for humans to do and to say this is what god wants from you the god of the universe the god who created all universes the god of life itself what he wants you to do is to do these 430 laws. Seems asinine on the face of it. Because didn't he have anything better to do before he gave us 430 laws, before he gave us us? Um, so honestly, what was missing from his life that he needed to give us 430 laws for? And then on top of that, there is 430 laws that don't even apply to us today. <laughs> and, and that's most of the Bible. So uh, again, it's it's just very confusing. If he wants something from us, it's not clear what it is, and it certainly isn't clear uh, why he wants it. Right. And and if we could go back, if we could go back to a simpler time where ten laws were were somehow perceived as uh, as as getting the job done. Right. So you, you, you walk up on this tall hill and there's this bush being burned that is never. Cons- OK, never mind. That's forget- OK. The story's ridiculous. But you come down and you've got these 10 rules. And some, however you got. Them, you've got these 10 rules. And, and one of them says, thou shalt not kill. Well, we've been sort of working that one over for a while now. And, and it sounds it sounds quite simple. Right? Thou shalt not kill. But we spend we spend untold numbers of man hours trying to figure out what something simple like that means because the world's quite a quite a complicated place. And and so it's easy to say, I know what it means to me not to kill. It means to uh, not take a life unjustifiably. Okay, now I've paraphrased it. That feels pretty good. I'm, I'm in a good place. Uh, I don't take a life uh, without justification. So now, do I need 100% justification? If someone's breaking in my house and they've got a knife and I've got a gun, um, can I shoot them? After all, they're not, as ar- they're not armed as well as I am. Uh, if they've got a gun and I've got a gun, but they're running away, uh, can I shoot them? I, I, I suspect that they may turn around and shoot back. If they are in the house, they have a gun, they're aiming it at the floor, and I'm aiming at them. Can I shoot? See, the thing is that 
simple statements actually don't get the job done particularly well. Right. Um, yeah, I don't. I just. I don't. I don't understand. I don't understand how the Bible reflects what God wants from us. I don't. And so I would agree. That's probably the. That's probably the best thing that we have because He's not talking to us in our heads, unless you're crazy. Um, but I mean, He's not. He's not giving us any better way to understand what He wants. But if you if you're saying, well, here's the Bible, this is what God wants. I'm out because I don't I don't understand that and I don't understand what any other God any other universe creating creature would want with us either. Um, they never do a good job at conveying their message and once again, you can, <clears throat> you know, you can look throughout all of fiction uh, and try to find a better story it always uh, works out like this uh, so. This is kind of a deal breaker for me. I can never fully sign on with obeying a God that I can't understand it. You know, I can't understand a basic thing like, so what does he want again? You know, if, right. I, if, if, I, if you convince me that it was real, I'd still be in this position of saying, okay, God's real. Um, what does he want again? Right. How, how do you know? Uh, I don't know if you uh, if you have in that list of things that shall not be referred to, um, uh, you know, with dots. Before list. Them. Sure. I, I've, got a, I've got an ordered list. Does that help? <laughs> yes. No, I, OK, so I, I don't know if this is a bullet point, but I, I do think. No, it's an ordered a, list, so it might be a, a number. OK, it, it's, OK, it, it's an ordered list. It. It's, it's a subjectively ordered list, though, because it might be a number and it might be a bullet point. Mm -hmm. uh, who knows? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a, a quantum ordered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it is interesting that the Bible has failed in, in a way that we don't talk about much. So the Bible is, is this thing that's supposed to give us a clear picture of God's will, right? And if, if we just read it properly, we have the commands and the examples and the necessary inferences uh, to arrive in our lives at, at what the will of this of this being is supposed to be. And, and I'm even and I'm even willing to grant that this is supposed to be true under some liberal interpretation, not 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 some Christian conservative interpretation, but but inspiration plus my own internal landscape, my own thoughts about these inspirations. Here's the problem. And here's what we don't talk about. The Bible failed so catastrophically that God wants us to pray about it. Okay. Um, let's see. Let me let me work this into the ordered list here. Um, <laughs> Sorry, did I did I blow up the ordering yeah it's, that's not that's not where that goes um that, okay that's fine though um it, uh th this works here so we not only do we not know what the god wants but we don't have any reliable way of communicating with the god um either so how do you communicate with a god um how do you communicate in a God where you know that your communication uh, has been taken, all of the forms have been filled out in triplicate, and that the, you know there's a process now going? You know, so if if we're talking about the government, let's say I apply for a new social security card, there are there there, there are ways for me to communicate with the government. Uh, I can go online, which is the most effective way. So please, people, don't get on the phone. Just go online. Just, just do that. Um, and uh, you can you can fill out uh, some forms, and you know you can. Uh, they will say you know this. Uh, you will get your new card in the mail uh, in you know in three weeks or, or whatever you can you can follow the progress of that you can see your status of that you know there 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 are ways to communicate with your government 
Um, if you want to talk directly to your senator, you can actually do that. You can pick up the phone and you can call them and you can ask to speak to your senator. Some of them might actually answer the phone and talk to you. <laughs> Most of them will not, but you can actually directly call them. You know why? Because they're public figures in a public office. They have to have a phone that people can call. <laughs> and so they do. Every last one of them uh, does. And you can probably talk to their um uh, uh, person assigned to answer phones and take down uh, requests, you can do that. You you can actually talk to someone in the senator's office about your problem. They will write it down dutifully, and there will be a record of it. Uh, whether anything ever gets done about it is another thing, but you can do that. Or sometimes if there's an issue, you can call the senator and you can say, look, senator, I want you to vote yes for this or vote no for that. This is one of the most powerful ways that you can move the government as a citizen. You may not realize that, in, at least in, in the U.S., because they do regular counts of phone calls and letters. They, their interns count those all the time, every day, and you know they can they can say okay well uh 34 percent of your constituency wants you to vote no on this mm -hmm. and 43 percent of them want you to vote yes and then there's you know this other percentage that's undecided this is a tried and true and real and honest way to communicate with your government so as archaic as it may seem we have effective ways to communicate with other people even people who are high up uh, from a from a, an authority perspective in our world how do you communicate with a god that you know that you've got the communication through and fill it out with trip you talked about you know praying for things i don't even know what that means anymore the more the more i talk to christians about prayer the less i even understand what that means how do, how do you pray exactly? Is there a formula? Do you have to say, dear Jesus, if you do pray, dear Jesus, are you actually praying correctly? Should you be praying to the Father in the name of Jesus or should you be praying to Jesus? Does that kind of uh, nullify it if you say, dear Jesus and not uh, dear Heavenly Father? Is you know Does this kind of formula thing matter? Uh, when you close out your prayer, do you know, did you hit send? Did it go anywhere? Did you, um, is there anyone looking at it? How do you know? Um, I have no idea. There's no, there's no religious equivalent for communicating with the God figure as there is with communicating with any other figure in our world. Right. And, and so even, even without the failure of prayer on the table, so, because I have a standard speech here about yes, no, and wait a while, right? But I'll, I'll just leave it. Um, people have heard it probably by this point. But even without the failure of prayer on the table, I find it interesting that after, uh, you know, 1,400 pages or whatever's in, in a, uh, you know, the, the standard Bible, right? After all of this, I find it interesting that there's this idea that you should pray to God to sort of figure out what he wants after you read his manual. That's, that's the interesting feature to me. So, and, you know, you got some piece of software. This isn't a terribly good analogy. It doesn't work terribly well, but I think the ideal will, will come across. So, so you read, you read the, the manual, you get the software open, you're using it perfectly well. Um, and, and, you know, then you have to, to call tech support to figure out whether you want bold or italics, right? But surely that's a decision you should be able to, to make for yourself. Um, it, what is, my, my question is this, what is God, uh, what are we supposed to get out of prayer if the manual is any good? Well, so clearly the manual uh, kind of sucks. Um, so one of, one of the things that it seems like a proper prayer might be is, you know, God, I, I understand that what you want me to do is to do whatever the Bible says. I was reading the Bible and I got really confused about, um, you know, this particular issue. Uh, can you clear this up for me? Um, 
Prayer doesn't get you that. <laughs> it doesn't buy you any clarity. Where do you go for tech support um, if you're doing your best to do what this God wants? And that's only guesswork, what this God wants. How do you, where is, where is tech support? And please don't say the priest. Right. So you you got this big problem. You've got two job offers. So it's so common in the world. Uh, we all want to make our lives better. And most of us have some sort of career path where where we face multiple opportunities. Right. Which job do we take? One of one job will take me to uh, to the West Coast. and Another job will take me to the East Coast. And what do I do? Right. And, and you can read God's instruction manual all you want. And what you find people saying is, the Bible didn't give me that kind of answer. And so now I'm praying for God to give me the answer that I need. You know, it, um, right. So... The, I, I can, Not a good instruction manual. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, I can I can hear the response. Uh, you know, saying that you know God doesn't give you like manage your life and give you all the details. You know, pick whatever job you think is uh, best. But okay, if God re doesn't give me that kind of detail, how do I know what kind of things I can ask for? If I can't ask for clarity on you know should I move my family to the East Coast or the West Coast? Uh, what about clarity on, uh, yeah, look, my wife is pregnant with a fourth kid and, you know, we went through contraceptive measures, but it didn't work this time. And uh, we really can't afford to have this uh, kid. And, you know, my wife's health isn't so good anyway. And I, you know, I think we should abort this child. And I looked at your instruction manual. It didn't say anything about whether I, we could do this or not. Uh, do do I just get on with it and make the best decision I can with that too? Um, you know where where does at what point um, do we just stop asking for help if if what people are going to say is well yeah you you should just figure that out for yourself uh, sure. you know, instead of expecting God to hand that to you in some kind of answer to prayer right just one more layer of nuance and then i will i will leave this and leave you with the, with the last word on it so i i make a decision like, like so, so do i have a fourth kid or not um we'll we'll stick with that and uh you know my significant other and i uh we we talk about it we pray over it we uh we read all of the relevant passages in the bible about having kids and, and let me tell you, some of those are disturbing, and I don't actually recommend following through with this advice to read the Bible on having children. I, I would just say, uh, leave it collecting dust on the shelf. But but let's let's say you do. You pray, you read, you, you meditate, you consult with your religious counselor, and then you decide, God says yes, have the child. And you have the child because you think that's the answer to all of your searching. And that child is, is killed by a car early. Or that child um, uh, becomes uh, disabled or uh, a, a drug addict, or it goes wrong in, in all of the ways that human interactions can go wrong, right? It, it, just pick any of them. Pick your favorite. Now, what am, I to, what am I to make of that outcome? I did all of the work. And it ended in grief, maybe not only for me. It might have ended in grief for my neighbors because my kid might have done something horrible. Right? What am I to make of what I previously thought was an answered prayer. Was I wrong about it? Because if I was, after doing all of the things that I, that I thought were responsible ways to uncover the will of God, and it went wrong, 
am I just to blame myself and say, oh, well, I was just, I was just wrong again. You know, I, I, I thought I knew what God wanted and, and I was just wrong about it. Um, sorry, maybe we'll do better next time. Uh, neighbors who lost a child to my drunk driving team. Am I to think, oh, well, I performed the will of God, but Satan got in the way. There, there's, there's that devil uh, thwarting God's plans again. And, and now I'm just, a, I'm just a victim. And oh, God, will you, will you work it out for me? Will you rewind time and, and keep my child from drinking and driving? Or, or <coughs> God, will you solve this problem for me somehow? Or, and, and this is what people often won't do. They might have just think, prayer doesn't work. And maybe even more. Actually, there's no magic being in the sky answering my wishes right after after a few times of that you whether you believe there's a being in the sky or not you have to you eventually come to the conclusion that well i i just won't pray anymore <clears throat> because either i'm not doing it right or i'm not understanding the answers and there's no way for me to get a better understanding um, <clears throat> I'm not going to pause this, but I'm going to get up. I got to go get something to drink. So I need you to fill in. It's going very bad. Yeah, no, I have, I have alarms going on. <laughs> Nothing is on fire oh, in my house. God is, God is telling you that we can't record. That is, this is the answer to somebody's prayer. Oh, no, no, well, this, this, prayer fail. This <laughs> intermittently. Um, no idea why we'll be moving out of this place soon, I promise. Uh, I need you to fill in about yep. 60 seconds. Yep, can do. So really, listeners, I don't, I don't have a way to make good sense of how to resolve what a God wants for me. If I, if I read his instruction book, and I follow his advice from prayer. And then I, I pray with, with the highest amount of, of earnestness that I have in me. And at the end, when, when praying these prayers as earnestly as I can pray them, the answers that come up are somewhat random in regard to the things I ask. When, when I can't tell that the prayer did any good by being honest about the answer, uh, I'm, left, I'm left to throw my hands up and simply say, even if there's a God out there, and even if he wants to commune with me on an individual basis, we don't understand each other well enough to commune somehow, even if he's sending all of the right signals, I am not capable of receiving them. And you, you can blame that. You can blame that on humans. And that's, and that's, perfectly, uh, that's perfectly fine. I think it's the wrong thing to do, but you can do it. Right, we can it, have it that conversation. It doesn't even matter if it's our fault. The, the, that's that's where I was going. Right. The, the problem is if if we've done something so bad, or or we are so made that we are rusty nails, and you know we too much rust for the rust oleum, or you know whatever <laughs> metaphor you want to. Oh, so, okay. Um, <laughs> it's not my metaphor. Um, I I know that's what. <laughs> uh, I'm citing. Put me on a Friday um, call for that, bud. I'm <laughs> citing one of. Uh, the uh, you know great apologists of our day, and believe it or not, I actually hope he is one of the great apologists of our day because I can I can talk to him. Um, William Lane Craig won't take my calls, <laughs> so um, you wouldn't understand him anyway. Nobody else does. <laughs> so, oh, it, whatever the whatever the speak. problem is that's blocking that communication, the fact is there's a problem. And we can't understand the communication that he's given to us, and we apparently can't communicate properly to him either. And so it, it means that there is no 
reliable method of communication in either direction to know what God wants. Uh, and so that's, you know, that's point number one out of five uh, people. This conversation was supposed to take 30 minutes tops. Uh, number two. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, you know, this is sort of the, the, this is sort of the typical clock for a not conversation on a not podcast. I know. I mean, they don't know this. They don't have to be, they don't, they don't have to suffer through all of it, do they? Um, Look, I warned them up front. But I told them there's a stop button and they should use it. It, it is, it is responsible behavior for them to use the button with the little square in the middle. Number two, um, <laughs> it seems like no matter who imagines the God, uh, you know, if it's on a, a television drama or a series or a book or, uh, you know, or a holy book, you, you read it far enough or you watch it far enough and the God always wants some kind of sacrifice. It usually comes fairly early. Um, now, you're never really completely clear <laughs> about what the sacrifice is supposed to be or why. But there's there's always this idea that God's need sacrifices um you know one of the ancient ideas would be that you know sacrifice is literally the food of the gods it's it's you know god's need to feed um but you know that doesn't i don't know if i don't know that that jives because what were gods doing before they made us were they starving to death because frankly, then they should have died. They should have been dead. <laughs> they should, you know, they shouldn't have been able to make us because uh, there was no us to feed them. Um, so they find themselves out there uh, one day floating around in nothing and they decide, you know, I'm really hungry. I think I'm very near death. I better create a uh, lesser being so that they can gather food for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I've got I've got those uh, I've got those alien short stories in my mind where where the you know the they come and you and you think they're all friendly and whatever and uh, as we as we get on the ship you know we find one of these alien books and they've been struggling to understand the alien language for a long time and uh, and after just as we take off right. Uh, we discover that it's a recipe for human for human soup. <laughs> you, you, you literally just recapped uh, one of the classic Simpsons um, horror uh, uh, Halloween. Uh, oh yeah, yeah yes, Look, yeah. yes. Uh, Halloween, my favorite. Um, it, it is my favorite holiday, um, and uh, and and there it is. Uh, that's a good one. You know that that story has been told by lots of folks. Uh, I think they're great, and. I, I think it's I think it's the right kind of question. So they get the, they get the book yeah. and uh, they're on the ship and um, they find the book and it's dusty, but they can read the cover. It says how to cook tasty humans and they're horrified and the aliens are like, no, no. And he wipes off the book and it says how to cook for uh, uh, humans or something like that. How to cook humans right. and then how to cook for humans. And then uh, the other people grab grabs the book and they say, "No, no, it says how to cook forty humans." <laughs> and they, and they wipe it off again. It says, "No, no, it's how to cook for forty humans." <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, that's it. It seems like sacrifice always ends up that way somehow where uh humans have to provide uh the food for the gods and you know if you take it uh, literally you know you've got to throw your baby in a volcano because god's got to eat uh, right and and even if i don't have to take it literally i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ liveth in me I, I, it's, <laughs> Galatians say twenty five. Um, I e even if it's figurative, the life which I now live in the flesh, I don't live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave Himself for me. 
Yeah, like, like I said, but Galatians 2.20, go read it. It's a, it, it's a it's song also. So if you go right. to the camps, you can sing it. Right. Um, I, I stopped. I stopped. Uh, yeah. it crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Anyway, the life uh, which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith and Son of God who loved love me and gave himself for me. For me. <laughs> Second verse, same as the first, a little bit louder and a whole lot worse. Um, okay, <laughs> I've got so much okay. uh, damage from my childhood. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and and that is what we do for you, dear listener. We pass the damage on so you can enjoy it too. <laughs> Okay, look, I, I swear I have not been drinking this morning. I well, swear I have not. I mean, you're not. You're not Sarah or anything, but um, no. I mean. <laughs> I, Sarah, I'm sorry. I didn't bring him up with that. I did not. Okay, so the, the thing is. There's that room say, under the bus for other people, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of room under the bus. Brian with an eye. Uh, the headlights are on you, buddy. <laughs> so, so the the thing that I think you said that that really resonated with me was, um, you know, it, this this sacrifice. It's 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 about humans, and even if even if we're not talking about blood rituals, um, God's tax uh, God's tax program looks like this. How much did you make last year? Send it in. That's what God wants. All, all he wants is everything that you have. And he is a, a bit like Mr. Burns in The Simpsons. He would give it all up for just a little more. Just a little more. <laughs> One of my favorite lines. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, did not, I did not know that this was going to turn into a Simpsons recap. Uh, but, but there we are. Uh, I, don't, I don't see a God that demands everything from us where there's, there, there's no room for, for sort of personal autonomy. There, there, there's no, I don't, I don't understand where a God would want anything from us. So never mind everything. That, that's obviously ridiculous. Why does he want anything? And the idea of a sacrifice, by the way, even if you don't think of it as food, it is, it is kind of food for the gods, but that said, it's, a thing that you find difficult to give up that God wants. It's it, it. In other words, if it doesn't cut a little deep, it's not a sacrifice. Right. Um, and I played that game, uh, and and I really do mean. Uh, some, sometimes we hear that, and we and we know that the, the person is speaking uh, with with a bit of hyperbole when they call it a game, right? I'm not speaking. I'm not speaking. <laughs> Try that for a third time. I'm not speaking with any kind of hyperbole. In my own life, I found that Christianity was a game. It was a game with a map that didn't have a territory. Uh, and, and I got tired of playing it um, because there was no there there. And if there is a there there from the first point and this far into the second point, I challenge you to show me where the territory is that mirrors the map. All right, before moving on to point number three here, I'm, I just, no, I'm not done with this one. Um, <clears throat> Take the humor out of this scenario. Your God. It's so hard now. <laughs> right. But, I mean, your God, just assume that your God pre existed humans. Hmm. What was that God doing before humans? You know, that whatever they need from you, humans, were they getting it from some other source? Did they, I, I did don't they burn know. out that source and they needed to create another source? I mean, what, it, because whatever was working for them before seems like it should be working for them now. And, and if it's not, what is it that we humans bring to the table that they need from us that, that they 
otherwise can't get. Now, I know the Christian, the standard Christian answer here is that God doesn't need anything from us. Well, that's fine and good, except he wants us to give, uh, he wants us to sacrifice. <laughs> so he's, he still wants us, and by the way, uh, Christians who know a little bit of your Bible, uh, you might uh, say that God wants, um, God, God does not want sacrifice, but mercy. Um, great. L let me just say that you only know a little bit of your Bible. Um, because in saying that, this was not a negation of the entire Jewish system, which was based on literally making animal sacrifices. Um, that's, that's what it was based on. And at no point was the prophet saying, oh, you should stop making those sacrifices. So, you know, whether it's sacrificing uh, an animal, your firstborn, um, you know, your time, treasure, talent, uh, it still does not sit right with me that a God who owns the cattle of a th on a thousand hills wants your one goddamn measly cow. Just as a just as a, a slight tangent to this, uh, there's a there's a thought exercise here that I think is is interesting. You've asked what was God doing before, and and obviously we can all ask what will God be doing in the in the great hereafter, after, you know, after judgment or whatever. But I, I think there's a a God idea in conservative theology that makes this particularly hard to to grapple with. It's the, it's the idea that God exists in all places and all times simultaneously. Um, now, some people will say, well, that's not phrase correct. Oh, fine. I'm, I'm not, if you don't see it that way, I'm not talking to you. It's that, it's that easy. If you don't see it this way, I'm not talking to you. There are people that do. I am talking to them. Um, if, there's a, if there's a God that exists in all places and all times, and he does that simultaneously before and after it's hard to see how that has any meaning. And, and I'm not offering the typical time objection of saying that God's outside of time and our time doesn't apply. There's this idea that exists that many people hold, that God exists in all times and all places simultaneously. With that in mind, we are supposed to be this limited, this limited time offer, this vapor that passes away. But with, a, but with a God that exists in all times and all places simultaneously, it's hard to even grasp how he would think. Oh, sorry, that's uh, perhaps I shouldn't use he. How it would think of before and after. When, when, when did he not have an earth with people doing people things if he's in all times and all places simultaneously? It's an interesting thought experiment. I'll, I'll leave it there. Will, will there be sacrifices in heaven? Uh, obviously, well, I say obviously, nothing's obvious. But let's just assume uh, we're not talking about burnt offerings, but, you know, sacrifices of praise. Sacrifice, will there be, you know, will there be continued prayer vigils in heaven? Except instead of prayers for asking for stuff, it'd just be prayers for telling God how great he is. I, I want to spend eternity telling this guy on this big throne how amazing he is. Um, right. I right. Is, 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 is God drinking in our praise 24 seven uh, infinity mm -hmm. there? Uh, what, why? <laughs> does, does God not, I, I often wonder, does God not ever get tired of that? Okay, I've now heard Hosanna to my name more times than even I can count. Look, I'm, I'm sort of done a, with that. I'm a guy with a ginormous, I mean, I'm talking about a huge one. Ego. Ego, people. Just had my finger over that button with the square in the middle. I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't be jealous. Don't be a hater. Don't be a hater. Um, and then suddenly <laughs> my finger is back. <laughs> I, 
have an enormous ego, uh, folks. I was, I've, I've been an entertainer since I was a, a wee lad. Um, so I'm used to the stage and, you know, a certain type of praise and adulation. I can tell you, even as a kid, I got tired of it fast. Um, I, I can barely stand someone complimenting me for something. Uh, and I can, I can say, um, you know, uh, a couple of months ago when I decided to officially, uh, kill SNS, you know, some of the tributes came in, I was moved to tears and I, it was hard to read. Um, the criticism was easy to read, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, you can't hurt my feelings, folks. <laughs> like I said, I've been an entertainer for a long time. I've heard it all. Uh, so um, I'm fine with that. <laughs> um, but it's hard for me to take uh, praise. And I understand I'm just uh, you know a small, feeble human being who doesn't deserve much praise. But when I, even what little bit I might deserve that I get, I, I can't take it very well. I can't imagine a God just sitting on a, a, some heavenly throne, drinking it in, smelling it like a sweet smelling savor, um, as, as the Bible puts it. I don't understand that kind of ego. Um, even if you, even if you deserved it, how could you take it? Yeah, I don't, um, I don't understand. Um, I, I don't understand having heard, um, uh, how great thou art, uh, by the way, I think it's a beautiful song. Um, I don't. I, I, I'm sorry. I don't. I, I, I knew you didn't. It's not that good of a song, okay? I used to I, think that a lot of this stuff was a beautiful song when I was a kid. I started writing because I thought, you know, I hear this stuff. I could do better. And as it turns out, I could. Um, it's not that hard to do better. So uh, I, I, I still think it's a beautiful song. Yeah, okay. um, it's, and, and it doesn't matter in the cosmic oatmeal cookie sense, whether there's better music or not. I like the song. I don't like the song. Disgusting song. Yeah, yeah, well, okay. But it is for, for a reason that doesn't have any do, anything to do with the fact that it's a nice song. It's, it's a song being sung to a being that doesn't exist. It's a nice um, you heard it for the first thousand times. That, well, it's, that's exactly what I was about to say, actually. There are some kinds of churches that you can walk into, and I've walked into some of them over and over and over and over. By the way, that's actually the point here. And you hear this song all the time. And here's the real point. I'm human. When I get to heaven, uh, yes, I hear that voice. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Boy, did that cause some laughs, right? No, 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 please finish the thought. Uh, I can't wait to hear the punchline. <laughs> uh, yes, please rearrange the following words into a phrase. You understand. Be by it. Yes. Uh, so part of my makeup is I get tired of crap, right? And and even even songs I like. I get tired of. And there it is. How does maybe maybe God is so different from me that he doesn't get tired of things ever. But if he is, just that difference may be enough to separate us in a way that we can never get together. So uh, just in case uh, the people have lost the thread as badly as we have. Um, that's a second punchline too, by the way, sorry. <laughs> that's what you get though, you, you know, you're, you're, you did this. This is not a show, uh, people. If it were a show, it would be much better. Um, the um, God demands some kind of sacrifice. 
Um, three. They always, uh, they being gods, uh, uh, they always have to be interpreted. I'm not going to spend overly long with this because we talked about the unreliability of communication, but it seems like, once again, um, you're, whether it's a TV god, a sci-fi god, a god written by a Christian writer, god written by an atheist writer, god written in a religious book such as the Bible, it, do, it does not matter. Gods are incapable of speaking clear things to humans. Uh, it's it's always a riddle. It's always a parable. It's always a prophecy. It's it's something that needs to be interpreted. And then on top of all of the, those things, because all of those things are there, then it's in a language that nobody alive at the time understands. And then it's delivered in a medium uh, such as writers written by scribes who couldn't actually write, <laughs> copied by uh, scribes who who couldn't write, but who could draw the symbols, <laughs> um, <coughs> literally copies. Um, and, and you get, this is, this is how these rhymes and riddles were delivered to us. It's always a, uh, a mystery inside of an enigma wrapped in a burrito. Okay, that was just wrong. Um, look, I, I'm, I'm going to go back. Uh, I don't like to, go back to things that I said, but I'm, I'm going to in this, in this limited case, because a little while ago I was talking about uh, short commands, right? And, and they're not particularly helpful, like do not kill, so everybody will remember that. Scene. Here's, here's the problem. Even if God were talking to me in my head, now I, I will tell you that, that if I thought God was talking to me in my head, I'd go get checked out. And I mean that. And I hope that my friends around me would say, uh, Andrew, you need to go get checked out. We, we care that, about you. And we say that all the time. What makes you think you would? <laughs> uh, once again, me by. Okay. So, so here's the, here's the problem. Even if God is talking to me in my head, it is not as if he would not need interpretation. Maybe he says, thou shalt, thou shalt not. And he, and he cleans it up a bit. He doesn't say, he says, thou shalt not murder. I would still potentially end up in a place where I would have to question, did I do the right thing? This, this guy broke in and I, I wasn't really sure, but uh, you know, in, in the heat of the moment, uh, I had to do something that I, I feel bad about and, and it's gonna end up in court. Maybe, maybe, even, maybe I'm even exonerated. So I'm not just found not guilty. I'm, 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 I'm exonerated, right? But it doesn't mean that I'm not going to still have the same question about whether I committed a moral act. And the only way for that question to be answered, if I'm wondering about what God wanted after he put this, this short pithy saying in my head, is for him to come back and say, I know the judge exonerated you, I didn't. Or I know the judge exonerated you, and I did. Yeah, well, direct communication is not um, something that this guy seems to be interested in, but there is always a guy. And by the way, it's interesting how it's almost always a guy. There's always a guy that he spoke to uh, who then becomes the intermediary, you know, I know what God said, I know what God means, and so now I'm going to tell you. Um, well, so here's the problem, people, I don't trust your intermediary. I don't trust Abraham as an intermediary. Uh, Christianity is built on Judaism, it's built uh, on Abraham. Abraham was a crazy man in a desert having fever dreams. I have no reason to trust anything that Abraham said God said. Why would I? I can't. It is, I am constitutionally incapable of thinking about some desert dweller 4,000 years ago and saying, yeah, that guy heard from God. <laughs> I can trust, I can trust that guy. Moses, don't trust Moses. I don't even believe Moses existed, but let's just say he did exist. 
I don't trust that guy. Why would I trust him? Why would I trust Moses about anything that God said? Why, why do I have to go through this kind of intermediary to know what God said for me? Right. So I, sorry, I'm going to go back to this because I, I can't let it go yet. Um, so I've got this question. I've got this, I've got this burning moral question. Did I do right or wrong? Now, the God plan, the God plan by Christian standards is uh, you just get to play a lifelong waiting game. So, so you did a bunch of things. You asked for a bunch of forgiveness. Uh, and, you know, in, in, the, in the by and by, God will make a decision about whether you get the secret decoder ring or not. I just want you to imagine a, a slightly altered, very slightly altered version of this story. And decide for yourself whether this would be better. God wants us to make the best possible humanity. And, and, and even if you think that best possible humanity is God winning as many souls to him as possible, then, then surely a better plan is not to make everybody wait to see if they get the secret decoder ring. The better plan is to simply offer immediate feedback. Uh, hey, you did the wrong thing there. I'm unhappy with it. Here's how you could have done better. That's, that's what good feedback looks like. Is it, we, we've all had, job, well, some of us have jobs where we have annual reviews and we had awful managers. And those managers just wait the entire, they don't do any proactive management of any kind. And you wait and you get down and you, you, know, you wonder what's, what's going to happen at my annual review. And you, you're sweaty palmed and you're fidgety and you, you know, you're watching the calendar for the date that's approaching and what's going to happen. That's God's plan. God's plan is to make you wait your entire life and suddenly find out whether you get a bonus or not. But we all know, we all know what better management looks like. Better management is, hey, here are these rules, folks. Here's what we wanted. This, this is our HR handbook. Uh, you know, women have to wear knee-length skirts. Uh, men have to wear slacks. Nobody can wear jeans except on Saturday. Whatever the HR handbook says, I don't even care. Good feedback looks more immediate. And if your God is making you wait your entire life to let you know whether you get his bonus, he's a bad manager. Okay, I'm done. You can have the last yeah. word. Sorry. Oh, uh, no, I don't need the last word on that because that's a completely different subject. So, uh, you know, as you... Well, you can have the last word on any subject you want then. You're, um, <laughs> We're we're knitting two different things, uh, which is fine. I, I realized that we were. I said that I I said that I wasn't done with the previous point. So I, I made that. Point. By the way, I've got other points I'm not done with. Just wait and see. I, I will I will have the last word on the thing that I was knitting, and then uh, you know we could we could actually at some point break this up into two different recordings, and we could just each have the things that we were talking about because it's two completely different shows. By the way, well, hey, we could have them listen in the left ear and the right ear simultaneously. I'm pretty sure that's what God's like. This is how this is how our conversations okay. go. Okay. This really is how it goes. You're seeing how the sausage is made. Um. You can never, ever, ever say that again. <laughs> well, I'm just opening the kimono. Uh, you know. Another thing you can never say again. I've, I've got to get me a kimono. Um, but <laughs> I, I don't, I don't. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm sure there's a point here. It feels a bit like a snipe hunt, but uh, you, you go ahead and pull us, pull us sure. back on, um, pull us back on target. Well, okay. Look, the, the thing I'm thinking is if I'm back in, um, the, the days of Moses, uh, and he's saying, okay, all of you men of Israel from age eight days to 88 years, uh, you're going to have to cut off a piece of your penis because God, I was in this okay. tent, you see, and God told me that this is what's going to need to be done. By the way, any of you who doesn't, who, who don't do it, uh, you'll be slaughtered. 
Uh, and, and by the way, would any of you care to guess how I'm going to be, how I'm going to mandate that it be done? It, well, okay, no, we're not. Uh -uh. Um, so thus, thus is the word of the Lord. And I, I just, I hear preachers. Um, yeah, I actually listen to preachers uh, these days too. Uh, I hear preachers um, say things like, you know, God gave me this to say. God, I, I was praying and God told me this. I'm not anywhere near inclined to believe that. And I just don't understand why anyone would be inclined to believe it if it's someone else in a very superstitious time way back then in, in, uh, in prehistory. Why would we believe that guy, but we wouldn't believe the guy on TV who said God spoke to him this morning? I don't understand. Yeah. Um, four, uh, they need us to assume things that uh, cannot be proven. Uh, this is, uh, you can call it faith, yeah. but all religious, um, uh, all religions and all gods want us to believe in things that can't be proven. And I don't care how much of an evidentialist you are uh, in Christianity. At some point, there is a thing that you that you're carrying on faith that that you think is a good idea that everyone believes so just one example of that is this idea of the fall if you're if you're a christian who doesn't believe in the fall great good for you uh most of your uh compatriots do believe that though so um you know that there was some kind of fall uh and what they require you to believe is that the universe before sin was a, a whole different kind of thing. It was a different creation altogether. Um, snakes walked upright. Uh, maybe it was common for animals to be able to talk. People lived uh, for hundreds of years. Uh, th uh, there was no toil when it came to growing things. Um, there were, you know, uh, baby. It didn't hurt to have babies because you know they just popped out. Boop, uh, no big deal. Uh, we're supposed to believe that nature operated that way before human sin and then the whole thing was just rejiggered somehow to operate a different way after sin and although the only thing we have access to is the post sin universe we're supposed to believe on faith that there was some other kind of universe this is that's a detail i don't want to get mired in the detail i'm just saying there is there's always something about your religion that's fairly important fairly critical that you just have to take on faith that can never be proven and i i find this to be something that i can't do so if if there's a god who's asking me to uh you know it to to in order to be pleasing to him i have to believe some things that can never be proven. I don't think I can do it, especially from a God who has the ability to prove it. This God could prove it. Uh, sure. You know, humans couldn't prove it, but this God could send me back in time and show me. Right? I mean, it, it could be it could be proven. There are things that God can do to prove things that humans can't do, but He doesn't want to prove it. He wants there to be some fog of doubt there uh, that you just take on faith that you take this leap of faith and trust him and i see no reason to ever require a leap of faith when you have the ability to show the real thing parents don't need their children to take a leap of faith okay what parents want to do is as be good parents and show good reasons for the things that they say and do whenever it's possible sure there are times when it's not possible but that's because we are limited humans we don't have the power of God. If we had the power of God to be able to show our kids in a way that they could understand the things that we were saying, uh, why we said them, we would do that. We, sure. it, it, we wouldn't just say, no, I want you to be in the dark and just believe in me because that's how I want you to be. That's, that's how I see this faith thing. And I can never bow down to a God that says... Um, yeah, I'm going to keep you in the dark just because I can, because I want you to get past your uncertainty just because. 
my my only comment here um, for the for the crossover listeners, um, the the SNS and still unbelievable crossover listeners, you'll you'll have heard me say this before. So uh, apologies for those that this is for those who haven't. There's a kind of reasoning error here for me where faith is concerned, uh, and and it's and it's a pretty easy one to to carve out. Um, we we know that there's a reasoning error. If we say uh, we can put men on the moon, why can't we cure cancer? We know it's a reasoning error because the one has nothing to do with the other um, directly. So it's, you know, it may both be science problems, but beyond that, there's no, uh, there's no, there's no clear connection between uh, being able to put something uh, on the moon and doing cell biology to eliminate cancer. And so we know it's a reasoning error. There's a, there's an, there's a fate error here. If we say uh, we can put people on the moon, we should be able to cure cancer. It's, it's a mistaken thought. Now, if you think, if you think that uh, someone who can turn water to wine can also live forever, that's an error. And so what I'm saying is the fact that there are miracles written about in the New Testament, never mind whether they're real or not. Let's say they're all real for the sake of this argument. They're all real. None of that tells you that there's a God that can live forever. It is fine. It is fine to have faith in a process. Even if you think God, maybe, maybe you can do this miracle. Maybe God gave you the power to turn water to wine anytime you want it. Let's just say you've got that ability and God himself gave it to you. It doesn't tell you whether he can give you eternal life. Okay, faith. That is that is Andrew on faith, and uh, I think that that was broadly close enough to that point that that you can say I sort of stayed on it. So there you are. Uh, no, but um, <laughs> yeah, <coughs> sure. <laughs> I, I am now going to reinvoke the dread phrase. Be <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> so. so uh, <laughs> I'm just I'm gonna, I'm gonna let that I'm gonna leave it uh, right there, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let the uh, listener decide, you know, when you comment, you know, which set of comments uh, you want. Don't mention bullet points though, or uh, or lists, because we have or two numbers. different lists. <laughs> so well, you, be very. You specific. have this idea. You're questioning faith, right? You're, you're questioning faith. Yes. And faith itself has has two prongs, justified faith. Things that we can demonstrate are true, and we can broadly use this word faith to mean a reasonable assessment of an outcome. And there is an unjustified faith. And you now have Andrew on unjustified faith. Yes, it seems to me, though, that if you can reasonably assess the outcome, and it's not faith anymore. We're not, we're, we, we don't call that faith as a general rule, um, certainly not the way it's used religiously. So, um, you know, the, the thing about evidentialists, uh, what, I, what I would always say about them, even when I was a Christian, is if you have evidence for it, then you don't have faith. <laughs> what you have is evidence. Evidence is the thing that Jesus said is better for people to believe without. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, if, if what you have is evidence for the resurrection and you don't have faith in the resurrection, uh, you have evidence for it. <laughs> so. Right. So this is this is one of those. It's just an oddity of language. Right. Because um, we can use uh, and, and occasionally you'll even see it, a statistics book um, that will use the word faith in, re in regard to uh, our subjective assessment. Of a, of a probability, right? So we can use the word in that way. Sure, the confidence of probability. Um, uh, sure. And and so that's all, that's what I'm saying. We, 
we can use this word faith in some in some completely reasonable way. And by reasonable, I mean faith in an outcome based on reproducibility. I, but I don't like to have to say it every time. Right. <laughs> right. And, and um, where our points come in is you might have confidence in one outcome. Uh, let's say you have confidence that uh, Jesus uh, walked on water. That doesn't mean that you have justified confidence in believing that he raised Lazarus from the dead. Um, but that you, was my exact point. If you're just trying to transfer confidence in one proposition to confidence in another proposition, uh, that doesn't work. No. And, and if you are doing that, stop. But, but this, is, this is what all gods and all religions call for at some point. Uh, even if you have pretty good uh, confidence in one thing, you know, maybe God spoke to Muhammad. Um, you don't use, you, you don't have, there, there are countless other things that you can't possibly have justified confidence in um, re regarding Muhammad and his actions. And the same is true with uh, Jesus or Moses or Paul. Um, so, and they're always making claims that, um, once again, are, are beyond your ability to prove and you're just going to have to apply some type of confidence, faith confidence, that this thing is true based on some other thing that you believe. Uh, you know, is there is there any evidence for a worldwide flood? Well, no. But you should have confidence, uh, faith, that there was a worldwide flood if you also have reason to believe that God created the universe. Um, and so, yeah, you can't prove the flood. You look crazy when you try to, but you have faith in in this God. Uh, so this, what I'm suggesting, folks, is this is the kind of thing that I'm incapable of offering. And, and if this kind of faith at any level is what is required to please this God, I can't do it. Then Even maybe. if I wanted to, I can't do it. Sure. For uh, for those who have sort of made this mental leap, I'll go ahead and, and say it out loud. Um, there may be a way to prove that turning water to wine also means that the being who told you, gave you the ability to turn water to wine can also give you uh, eternal life. But if there is a connection there, that too has to be demonstrated, not taken on faith. There has to be some answer, some discernible, reproducible answer. By the way, I have no idea how you'd reproduce, um, you know, showing someone they can. <laughs> how do you live forever except living forever? So I don't, I don't know uh, how you would prove that proposition as far as I can tell. It's untestable. If you think differently, if you if you think there's a way to prove a proposition about everlasting life, I'd love to read that comment because maybe I'm a, maybe I'm missing it in the uh, in the heat of the moment. Uh, but there may be a way uh, to connect turning water to wine or raising someone from the dead into a reasonable assessment that someone can give you everlasting life. But that work has to be done, not taken on paper. Well, and so one one more uh, thing here uh, before we move on to uh, point number five. Uh, let's say that the God does the work of convincing me of of these things that you know I'm not convinced of, and then He gives me the assignment to then go convince other people. That seems that seems so backward and stupid to me uh, until that even convinced as I am. I would, I would then begin to doubt this God's um, morality, quite frankly, because you see what trouble I had believing this stuff. I'm not a God. It took a, it, it would take a God to convince me that a God is there. <laughs> and now you want right. me to go and be your prophet and be put to death, to, to be 
you know, crucified upside down or to be burned at the stake uh, as a blasphemer or something. You want me to go out into this mob and try to con- convince, <laughs> excuse me, them so that there'd be some inspiring story about me uh, 2000 years from now. Are you kidding me? If you could convince me directly, then why don't you get off your lazy, holy God ass and convince the rest of them directly? Why use me to be largely unsuccessful and then be burned at the stake for this? Sorry, I, I was I was laughing because um, the Great Commission now makes uh, now makes uh, a different kind of a different kind of sense. So you know. Great commission as well as I do, go into all the world, preach the gospel, every creature he that believes and baptized shall be saved. Never mind that that's at the end of Mark. And there's <laughs> right. look, that is not my fault. I'm aware of it. I'm not responsible for it. But but given the Great Commission, here's here's the way it should actually read because you're right. You're right that uh, if God appeared to me and and He wanted me to go and tell everybody else He appeared to me, they shouldn't believe me. So here's here's the way uh, the Great Commission should actually read to, to a reasonable thinker. Go into all the world, collect all the people that don't reason, uh, that don't reason very well, <laughs> use your story that shouldn't be convincing to convince them because those are the people I want. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, that's why, that's why I was, uh, I, I was chuckling. I know it was disruptive, so apologies. So, uh, <laughs> number five, our 30 minutes is almost over here. Um, we are required to deny some part of our basic humanity as if it were evil. Once again, this seems to be true of almost every kind of religious thought, philosophy, uh, every, every god. Uh, because, you know, the gods, they're so much greater than us. They're they're like us, but better. They're better looking. <laughs> they're stronger. Uh, they 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 have prettier women. <laughs> you know they they're, um, you know they're gods, and we're we're just weak, dirty, disgusting humans. And uh, some part of some part of our humanity is completely unacceptable to them. Never mind the fact that they made our humanity, <laughs> okay? Um, forget, just gloss over that for now. Don't get stuck there. There is always some part of who we are and what we are fundamentally that we have to deny as if it were a bad thing. Um, you know, you were walking to the grocery store, you're a married man, but you saw this beautiful lady and you turned and looked and you got a boner and you enjoyed it. <laughs> and then you went on about your uh, business. Women, you have the equivalent. You can never of say that again. Shut up. Uh, so I know <laughs> it, this is not just a man thing. Uh, women also get boners looking at women. Um, what I'm tra- <laughs> trying to <laughs> It's really off the rails. <laughs> it's, it's the last bullet point. <laughs> so, it's not a bullet point. <laughs> okay, go ahead. So um, there's always, but you know, but we're supposed to feel bad about that, even though it's a natural human uh, response. We're supposed to feel dirty uh, and ashamed and sorry and that we should grovel in before something uh and acknowledge our awfulness and do and, and then do something you know and hope, hope beg for forgiveness for being what we are by nature uh, i can't do that anymore i, it seems I can't like a bad idea i can't apologize for being me Right. So, you know, I know it's a, a a movie line, but it fits here. I'm done apologizing. Um, yeah. I'm done. You know, so whatever whatever the thing is that I do that's a part of my humanity um, that offends some yeah. God, I'm not sorry, and I'm not going to pretend to be sorry. I'm not sorry 
Okay, sometimes I'm greedy. Sometimes I see something and I really want it and I don't need it, but I want it and uh, I'm willing to work a little bit harder uh, and save a little bit of money so I can buy it because I just wanted it. Okay, is that bad? I don't give a fuck. That's my that's my answer to that. And I never I can you know you can I can fake get on my knees and fake pray for forgiveness, but I'm not wrong. I'm not sorry. And and that's the truth about men. So it seems to me to be a bad idea. Uh, I, I don't I don't think um, modern psychologists. And, and by the way, uh, I mean modern psychologists because there were no ancient psychologists. They thought demons did it. That's not psychology. Okay, sorry, uh, just another, another diversion. I, I can't help it. There was no script for this thing. And I think your bullet points are imaginary. Okay, uh, the, the problem is that denying who we are is a bad idea. It's a bad idea to, to say that um, this is a kind of thing that I do and I'm broken when I do it. Uh, very often leads to lack of acceptance of, of that kind of thing, right? Uh, surely the better thing to do is to own it at its deepest. I don't ask forgiveness for it in the, in the sense that I want some cosmic uh, oatmeal cookie to wipe it away as if it never happened. I should have to grapple with it. I should have to live with it. It should be... Uh, the, the, the blood should be on my hands if blood it is. Because there are, it, it's a broken notion of forgiveness, in my view, in my personal view. Well, sure. And I, and I want to make a, I want to draw a distinction um, between the things that I'm not sorry about and the things that I am sorry about. That, that you can, uh, that I do feel bad about, and I will do my best to change. So this general notion of, you know, me following some, you know, human predilection of mine, if it doesn't hurt anybody, uh, I'm not sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not, I'm just not sorry. This is just what I am. This is who I am. If you do not like it, there are 7 billion other people on the planet that you can befriend. <laughs> so um, not sorry. However, I am um, conscious of, so I'm not worried about sin. Uh, I don't care about offending your God, the God, some other God. I don't care what offends a God. I just don't care, can't be bothered to care. Um, I do care about what offends my fellow man and woman. Uh, so uh, how much of this do I want to get into? Even, even though I think some of the mm, outrage on the board recently about the use of the term Chinaman was uh, just, uh, just fake point, points getting on, on an internet discussion board, Here's the thing, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter whether the people who brought that up were being disingenuous. If it is true that some people consider that term um, offensive, I didn't know it was offensive. I'm not the one who used it, by the way, but I, I could have. I had no idea it was offensive. Um, but here's the thing, they said it was offensive and they didn't even need to prove it, as far as I'm concerned. I, I, at that moment, wiped it out of my vocabulary. That's fine. I won't use that term anymore. I don't, I don't care if I can prove to you by reason that, that, that it shouldn't be offensive, right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, if, if you say that this is, this is a pejorative, uh, that could be offensive to uh, other humans because I do care about uh, other humans and you know certain types of offense I, I don't want to cause for no no reason and I can easily get around it by saying something else that's not offensive great I will do that so um, I, I am I am happy to if if I if I have used some kind of racial slur 
unwittingly, uh, I'm just, I, I, I publicly apologize for, for any of that. Just let me know what it is. I'm not going to bother grilling you on whether it's whether it's actually a, a slur or not. I, I will just I I'm sorry I use that. I won't use that anymore. And if I slip up, I will I will feel bad about that, and I'll try to do better next time because you've got to change a, a lifetime of of habits and vocabulary and uh, patterns of speech and thought and things like that. So uh, I I uh, am happy to repent of harm. I do to other humans. I offer no repentance to the harm I've done to the ego of a god. On because you brought it up, um, the the kerfuffle on the skeptics and seekers board about Chinaman, Chinaman. China, okay, I, I here's my problem with the whole thing. This group has been uh, locked in a deadly embrace about the notion of philosophical charity for a long time. And to be fairly straightforward, I don't think either side does a very good job with philosophical charity toward the other side. But I'll say this, uh, if, if you think that philosophical charity is important and I, I agree that it is, even if I'm not always good at it myself. I think it's a particularly difficult thing uh, to do. And if you're on a podcast and you're not talking to the person that made a particular argument, as a, for instance, philosophical, philosophical charity is especially, especially treacherous because you have to tread the line of, of making the best version of their argument, right, without going outside their argument and you don't have them there. So you're best to stay as close to what they said, in my view. Anyway, that's an aside on philosophical charity. But what this board has not done, after preaching philosophical charity from both sides, is be remotely charitable on this particular problem. And, and so if we want better conversations, uh, let's get back. Let's get back to that notion of philosophical charity. And the Chinaman thing needs to die where it is yeah i i think it is too because there's there's there really is no there there but it doesn't but once again i, I as i say i don't care whether there's there there um because uh you know i i do words for a living right i know other words <laughs> so i'll uh i'm happy to do that and i am sensitive to um unintended racial slurs so I uh, having being a person of a race that gets slurred all the time. Um, yeah, I, 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 I get the sensitivity. So but I, I also think it's really, really a bad conflation uh, to conflate something like, uh, you know, saying Chinaman to calling someone a sand nigger, right? That's not a, that's not the same thing. It's, it's simply not the same thing. Um, and so uh, we, we should be careful about those conflations and we should be careful not to water down real um, pejoratives, uh, you know, so, and we should also be careful about uh, conflating uh, unintentional with intentional slurs, uh, if you will. So there's there's a lot to be uh, considered there. You know, you you might have a, you might have the habit of calling the people in your uh, close. Uh, inner circle you know you might you might say that's my boy right there uh but you should not say that of me <laughs> and so um and in uh, uh all fairness uh, to the people out there he never has and if he did i would call him on it <laughs> but um 
you you should you should probably be careful how you uh use that term because that can that has some historical uh negative connotations that you probably don't mean and by the way when people do say that i don't then raise the flag of offense because i recognize it as an unintentional slur uh, it's it's very different than if someone called me a nigger. So um, this this whole Chinaman kerfuffle thing, uh, it may be somewhere in the category of saying something like "my boy." Uh, it's not in in the same category as saying something. Uh, more um, harsh than that. Uh, and so, you know, I, it, it doesn't actually help the cause of uh, racial understanding and peace uh, and good communication by, by creating more outrage over things that don't require the outrage versus things that do. And, and we shouldn't confuse the message there. Uh, I won't outrage where outrage is justified, but if we if we outrage everything and it just looks like we're trying to score internet points, then outrage loses its um, its its ability to to bring about change. I don't have anything. Uh, I, don't, I don't have anything to add to that. Um, I I have been disappointed in uh, that particular conversation. There have been some good ones, by the way. And, and I, I hope the good ones continue uh, under the banner of, of this not episode on this not show. Uh, <laughs> not a show. It's not an episode. There is no skeptics and seekers. I, I, I understand. And, and I, I hope that the good conversation well, see, now I'm stuck with, that, with it not continuing. So, so I'm going to see if I can do better than that and, and just say that even though this is not a show, I hope a good conversation does continue. Um, I am going to create a new page for it, though, so that, yeah. so that the conversation can reset it, because we now, do, it does need a reset. <laughs> is, is, it, uh, is it a page? It's, it's not an episode and it's not a show. Is it a page? Okay, never mind. Don't, don't it's no, just... Just leave it as the squirrel that it is. Um, I, I and, mean, I had a real, a fairly deep obscenity that was on the tip of my tongue. Um, that was self-control for you, the listener. <laughs> so <laughs> you were welcome. Uh, welcome. You got to see that one time. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Because when uh, Andrew and I are not saying things on a microphone, I, I have no no problems with the harshest of obscenities <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i really don't have anything to say to that except that i hope uh when the new page is up and there's a a, a fresh slate underneath it uh, i hope that the good conversations will be pulled forward because frankly the one that was just recapped it's not a good one no, it's not a good one. And but once again, I do want to say uh, I I still learned something from it. Uh, I've still made the modification in my life, um, but it wasn't a good conversation. And I I just think that we can do better than that. And let's maybe spare the outrage for uh, you know. And this is true for all sides, by the way. Let's, let's spare the outrage for things that are actually outrageous. And 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 by the way. If this if this Chinaman thing had been brought up in a way that seemed even remotely uh, ingenuous, uh, and just uh, as a way of saying, you know, some people some people look at that as offensive, um, you know, guess what? That would, that, would, that would have had such a better effect. Um, so I just uh, you know I do want to. Uh, avoid things that are, are racial epithets uh, and things that are adjacent to racial epithets. 
Um, but let's not confuse, um, you know, some some something that's actually said and done in pop culture quite a lot with something that's in an in intentional racial epithet. Um, so that said, yeah, denying denying our basic humanity is, is one of those things. So I'm just go over these real quick. Uh, we can't understand what it is gods want. Uh, they uh, usually demand some kind of sacrifice. Uh, for what reason, I have no idea. Uh, they always require some kind of interpretive method uh, because they never speak plainly. You can't understand them. Uh, they need us to assume things that cannot be proven. Uh, you know, so there's some important part of the message that we've got to take on faith. And then uh, finally, we're required to die some uh, deny uh, some part of our basic humanity as if it were uh, evil. These are five things. We could do three more conversations just like this with different bullet points. Uh, but I'm, what I'm trying to do is just get at the heart of some of the things that I can't get past. Now, if there's a God who wants to fix my heart so that I can get past these things, uh, you know, it's welcome to, to do so. But in my current state of humanity, all of these things are just deal breakers to me. I could never, for instance, I mean, this is one of the things that we didn't mention, Andrew, and I'm, I'm frankly surprised that you didn't mention it. And although it's completely unfair, I'm going to subtract uh, two points from you for not mentioning <laughs> Thing. That's okay. The the uh, machine has a balancing mechanism, and and, and when yeah, yes, <laughs> I uh, I pulled out the balancing mechanism, my friend. Um, so the, uh, minus two. And you can never say you. that again. I... <laughs> for not mentioning that, um, any god that wants to be worshipped is one that I am incapable of worshiping. It, it's like a it's like a person who says you have to love me. I de I demand you love me. You know, if a king sits on a throne and makes a decree that all the people love him, he has guaranteed that no one can. It, it because it can't be done upon uh, demand. Um, and okay. worship by um, the same standard is something that is a natural overflow of the heart. Um, I cannot I cannot produce that artificially for someone who requires it. So that's a that's a that's a nice bonus thought. Uh, I am I am going to give a, a, a similar uh, what I think is quite parallel thought. There there's this notion of a God out there that doesn't heal us of things that he says are bad that we say we want healing. from. So let, let me just give you an example that floated around um, uh, out in our small community, uh, porn addiction. So there's a person who uh, intimated that uh, he or she had a porn addiction. And the question came up in a, in a lengthier conversation, fine. You think your God doesn't want people to have this addiction. And you think that it's in your best interest to align your will with God and not have a problem with porn. Yet your God, yet your God doesn't heal you of that addiction. Now, I actually get the argument from Christians that God won't overcome our will. I, I think there are problems here, but I understand the notion that, that God is not going to uh, somehow subvert our will, make us do things unintentionally. Okay, I don't, that, that's, I'm sorry. Make, create in me a clean heart, oh God. Um, look, you can't take this. Look, the machine is steadily subtracting points from you. Oh, look! It, oh, it, the numbers are worrying. I, I've never seen it do that before. Okay, now look. This is my point, right? If God wants something, and you want it too, that thing should seem to be the easiest decision for a God to make. Right? Why should we go to a hypnotist? 
to try to get us to stop smoking. Uh, we obviously want to stop smoking. And then we go to God and say, well, uh, Lord, I, I need to, I, I can't stop smoking on my own. I need your help. And the, the wrong response would be to say, well, God doesn't, um, you know, force you to do anything. You know, well, no, I want it. <laughs> right. So if I can't get it from you, I want to go to a hypnotist. I want to go to a psychic. I'm going to go to a swami. I, I, I'm doing everything that I can do. Uh, it, it seems that that is the kind of thing you should be able to bring to a God and say, please uh, help me overcome my worst impulses so that I stop doing this. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Right. right. And, and if, he, if he or she or it doesn't, I don't, I don't know in what sense the word good is being used to apply to that God. All of a sudden, if, if we say, for instance, that, that my struggling with porn addiction and, and leaving it, you know, uh, you know, I only watch porn four times a day rather than 12, you know, you know however, however I go with addiction. Right? So, so I, I do better with it in, in some measurable way. Right. And that's good. I'm, I'm doing a, I'm doing a noticeably good thing. I'm, I'm, I'm actually struggling to, to uh, somehow have this will of this God that I think it wants. Okay. If that is good, but this God doesn't heal me of this addiction that would make me even closer to its will, but yet we still call that God good. I don't see that there's any substantial way in which we're using the word good in the same way. Yeah, so, I mean, the bigger problem for me is that this God who won't cure you of your porn addiction, um, I'm just fine, people. I can quit anytime. Um, the, the God that won't cure you of your porn addiction is the same God who gives a rich man a pool table to go with his foosball table. Oh boy. That's, that's the same yeah. God. That prayer, God says, yeah, I'm in, in fact, I want to make it a good table. Not one of those ones that wobble. Um, he'll, he'll give, he'll do that, but you own your knees every day praying to be cured of your, you know, some other, some addiction. No, I'm not going to do that. That's not, that's not within my will to do. Right. So, so my, my last thought summarized is this. When you think about your God and its goods, and you think about humanity and its goods, if you're using this word good in two separate ways, even if you think there's a rational reason for it, you're not comparing these goods. And if you're supposed to be good like your God, and you can't compare human goods to this God's good, you're not actually having a comparison. You're deceiving yourself. So what I'm saying is only this. In your definition of rights and wrongs, be consistent. That's all I'm asking. So folks, if you want to hear some more conversations like this, uh, just leave a comment. Skepticsandseekers.squarespace.com for as long as I keep paying for this goddamn site. Um, I, I am I am praying for money in your account to keep that. Uh, you know, I've been I've been looking, uh, looking for the super follows. Um, do I actually have to sign up for a Patreon account, or do they do they just give you money when you when you say Patreon? Because I've said really it. depends on whether you're a Christian or a skeptic. Really, it really depends. Because not I I've lost money since I started doing the show, and so I'm thinking <laughs> something. So there's something wrong with how I'm doing this. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, look, this this I think was a good conversation between us, and and this did 
largely, this is largely the kind of conversation we have. This is the, largely the kind of conversation we have every single day. God, please shoot me. <laughs> Just shoot me. Why do I keep answering the phone? <laughs> Uh, I think I think it was good conversation. Uh, I appreciate uh, appreciate getting to have it. Um, it was uh, it was worthwhile. I hope I hope that everyone will will think so. And and as Dave said, if you if you want to hear more of these, um, say so uh, say so in the comments. Um, there are always more of, of these conversations over on uh, still unbelievable as well. Um, and Dave as always, I, I enjoyed. Uh, enjoyed having a chat. And, and by the way, I, I apologize for unfairly throwing Sarah uh, under the bus um, for her Chinese beer problem. Um, she does not belong under the bus. She is the one driving the bus after two Chinese beers. And so all of you fools who found yourself under it, <laughs> blame her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Okay, no, I'm not participating. I'm not, I'm not participating. She's, she's a friend of mine. I'm not participating in this. I, I, um, I like Sarah too, but she doesn't drunk post nearly enough. Um, that's uh, so. Uh, look, if you would like to have some of these casual conversations with someone other than me, because frankly, I don't. <laughs> Uh, let me know that too. Uh, we'll pair you up with someone who does want to talk to you, say like Andrew. And, um, you know, I would like to hear some of these conversations. I also will say something else in, in passing too. Um, it's, it's a little bit of a catharsis for me to be able to have this kind of chat, which we probably do periodically because we really do talk all the time. And, um, Thanks often it often it's ugly it's not this cordial at all <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm they'll get to hear one of those that look that'll long enough timeline that'll happen it will happen we will have uh turn the mic on and i out of spite will just post the damn thing <laughs> and so um but i it there's a a little bit of a catharsism for me. I'm I'm going through uh, some shitty life circumstances, and I will just uh, open the kimono a peak. And again, <laughs> I left my underwear on. Okay. Well, let's find out if I do. Um, no, let's. <laughs> So I'm moving uh, tomorrow, I think, but it it has already been the move from hell. I'm not going to give you the details of that, but oh my god, um, this is it's been so hard. It's been such a long process, and it's so goddamn expensive. Um, nothing good about this move, and I but I can't wait to get out of here. And so. Um, there's there's uh, some of that going on in my personal life, but I also have a, a health issue. I, I I thought that I might wait uh, to mention it before I had uh, results, but I'll go ahead and mention it now because I may not talk to you guys again for a while. Um, so I've I've had this issue with this cough that I I can't seem to control, uh, and it's got my voice all jagged. I at, at times I sound like a 90 year old man and instead of the 51 year old man that I am and um it's uh it's hard uh, because when it starts it's hard to stop and uh it happens uh at the most inopportune times sometimes I wake up coughing and I can't uh, get back to sleep it's just it's uh, terrible uh, really, and I've been uh, doctors have been looking at it. And, uh, it's been going on for a while. They haven't been able to find anything uh, to stop it. They just keep saying, um, you know, post nasal drip and you know sinus, you know, whatever sinus issues <laughs> uh, because I'm congested all the time and uh, coughing all the time. So um, you know, after 
COVID tests and a couple of rounds of antibiotics and uh, all of the things that they do to get you out of their office um, uh, after a uh, bad diagnosis. Uh, I'm fairly convinced bad diagnosis. Uh, certainly an incomplete diagnosis. Uh, it's a lot of, lot of things. They finally did some real tests. And um, so it turns out uh, that I have uh, three things going on. Uh, they still don't actually know which thing is the problem, but they're just things that they found out that have been uh, on my mind. So one of the things um, is uh, several small nodules in my lungs. Uh, now I'm told, well, I'm told by the internet because it's never wrong about this stuff, um, that that's probably not a big deal. Uh, it's pretty common for lungs to get nodules, small nodules, um, for no apparent reason. And, uh, it, you know, usually has to do with, um, you know, uh, things that are things that may be going on in other places. So maybe if you have some kind of sinus infection or something, um, you can you can end up with lung nodules um, that aren't terribly serious. So if you're thinking cancer, it's it's probably not that. So says the internet. I do have an appointment to see a pulmonary uh, uh, specialist this week, as of the time uh, you hear this recording uh, that we're making this recording. The second thing uh, they found was an enlarged thyroid. I do not know what an enlarged thyroid means. I, I don't it's, even... it's larger than a normal thyroid. Okay, so I've done a lot of research and I didn't come across <laughs> that at all. Uh, so uh, apparently I have uh, one that's larger than normal. Um, that's, uh, that's my medical opinion. <laughs> well, <laughs> and people would wonder how you would know. Um, As they that. should. <laughs> Is there any way to back out of this um, gracefully? Uh, uh, where was I? Um, an enormous thyroid. Um, if someone could tell me what the hell um, a thyroid is and what it means when it's enlarged, I'd love to know. Um, but so that's the second thing. And the third thing is they found some uh what do they call them um not nodules but lesions legions thank you legions uh in my uh tonsils uh and that they are concerned might be cancer um so never mind the growths in your lungs <laughs> That's the that's the least of your problem, sir. Um, you probably have some kind of throat cancer in your tonsils. Um, the thing is, uh, the doctor wants to get me into bi biopsy and uh, you know have it have it looked at a little bit thoroughly. But that's the thing that um, they're actually concerned about. So uh, I will have an appointment to see the doctor, and I suspect at this appointment this week. I will simply uh, pay my copay uh, and they will charge my insurance company. I will sit and talk to the doctor for five minutes and then the doctor will schedule uh, a biopsy. <laughs> uh, I don't know why they didn't just schedule a biopsy uh, and you know skip this part, but at any rate, that's, um, that's all coming up. And I suspect at the very least, uh, they're gonna rip out my tonsils and thyroid and good riddance because yeah, they weren't really doing anything for me. Um, so uh, that's that's been looming over my head for uh, a little bit now, and um, you know, so it's uh, there. There is a non-zero possibility that I have some form of let's call it very mild and treatable cancer that might 
uh, end up in uh, minor surgery and a little chemo. So I would consider that a win if uh, that's all that happens. And if it fixes the problem, my, th my throat in the process, fantastic. If any of you guys have any experience with this or would like to point me to some resources people will do, uh, I'll be glad to look at your links. Uh, if there are any Christians who would like to pray for me, don't. <laughs> okay, thank you. I, just, I knew, I knew. <laughs> um, but they're pretty good at this stuff, Dave. Uh, there are, um, if, if it is some kind of, uh, it is some kind of cancer, and like I said, may, may or may not be, right? Um, but this, um, this targeting therapy now, they are pretty good at that stuff. Um, it, it used to be that that these sorts of cancer therapies would damage surrounding tissue a lot more. That sort of thing. Um, they um, they've gotten good at this, uh, so I suspect it will be fine. Yeah, but they're not better at it than God is at uh, at giving <laughs> me the cancer. I mean, if God wants me to die of cancer, brother, there are no. So Andrew and I, I was going to say, and yet it showed up on a, yet it showed up on a stand, but you went the other way. I was like, <laughs> had this perfect opportunity to be snarky, and you said that God gave it to you. You're know, not better at taking it away than God, and yet it showed up on the scan. <laughs> yeah. So here's the thing: Andrew had this concern uh, because uh, occasionally he pretends to be human. Um, so. Uh, I find it an interesting diversion from my actual, uh, you know. <laughs> I'm not fooled. Um, he, um, when I first told him about it, uh, he was uh, concerned about me mentioning it in public. Fact, what he said was, <laughs> "There's you cannot, <laughs> you cannot mention this on the board. You, you cannot. The, the Christians would just have a day." And uh, whereas I appreciate the concern, I just don't give a damn. Um, if if you're God, let's let's just take the, the craziest Christian view of it. If your God is getting me for using my voice to um, extol the uh, cause of atheism, a couple of things. Your God is so amazingly petty even if you believe in him, you should die defying him. If that's what you really believe that your God is doing, I, I would accept that theory if it gets more people to say, oh no, that God is a monster. Um, the second thing is I must be pretty effective. I had no idea I was this effective. I am so effective that God had to strike me down. Andrew, did you know that I was this effective? This well, it seems there's another problem too, right? Because um, this God that lives in all times and all places at once <laughs> somehow seems to have uh, somehow seems to have missed the starting gun. <laughs> he certainly could have done many things to stop me from being born. Um, or, or, you know, just stop you from leaving Christianity. Maybe you were never a Christian. Maybe that's why this is all up. So, I, but, I mean, he, he seems to have missed the whistle at the beginning right. of this particular game. To get uh, to this point, at which I think is your point, God would have had to already have it in his plan to strike me down. In fact, the only reason, it would be like Pharaoh, the only reason you raise a guy like that up in the first place is so that you can fabulously strike them down. That is, um, that is, or I mean, the the other the other option is he's as inept as he seems to be. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially if I survive this thing, um, you're going to survive. <laughs> you're you're going to survive. I su I suspect. You know, I'm I'm actually pretty sanguine about this stuff. I'm I'm not a stoic in the formal sense of the word, but I've always been um, reasonably stoic about uh, shit that happens in life uh, because I don't believe there's a god. <laughs> there is no, there's nothing to rail at. <laughs> you know, um, 
it, I don't, uh, for the audience, uh, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. I never have. I've never had to quit some chemical habit. I, I've never had it. I have no desire. You really have been a Boy Scout. You I have really have. Truly been a Boy Scout. And so if there is some kind of cancer going on, especially in my lungs, that would be just be the great irony <laughs> that you live the cleanest possible life you can and you still end up with this. But I mean, there's, there's nothing to be angry about. You know, there's just, there's no one to direct that anger at, and I just don't see any point of it. Um, there's a, you know, Andrew and I, one of our favorite writers, uh, I think it was Asimov, who was asked, you know, if you, if you knew that you were going to only had another day to live or a week to live, what would you do? And his answer was, I'd write a little faster. Um, and that's my five answer minutes, too. but yeah, just <laughs> you found yeah. out you only had five minutes to live. I'd, I'd type a little faster. Yeah, I, well, I would if I knew I had five minutes to live, I guarantee you I would do my best to try to uh, write up a post. <laughs> I would I would publish some of my unpublished work. Um, that's what I'm a writer. That's what I have my trade. And so I do I do. Um, that's what I would do uh, if I if I'm you know, if I do have to go to chemotherapy, I'll bring my laptop. If I can move my hands and write, that's what I'm going to do with my last breath um because it's it's what i enjoy doing and uh i i would do that and so i don't have any kind of a dread about um being dead i do have a dread about dying because dying is a shit show <laughs> I've, I've seen that happen that's it's 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 terrible um but being dead is great i'm, I'm okay with that um being dead is no more a, a, an existential worry to me than you know the day before my parents met each other uh you know what were you then well i you know it's a ridiculous question to ask <laughs> in in my opinion so even if i'm wrong about um what awaits i'm i certainly have no reason to have any apprehension about it so i don't and um so whatever happens uh i guess time will tell but if there is in fact some kind of christian response uh that says well you know this is what you get i, I would really encourage you to stop and consider that response as a, as an argument better than any i could make against the monster that you serve so i, um, I think that's for those <laughs> for those wondering um if if something went horribly wrong, um, I would make sure the community knew. If anybody has that that question, um, but I don't I don't think there's any sort of you know it's, it's not like this is probable, right? I, I, I want to I want to wake. I'm just going to say it right now. I don't I don't actually know what a wake is exactly, but uh, I like the sound of it. Uh, I want to wake. I I want some drinking. I want. I don't. I I'm not. I don't drink myself. But everyone I know drinks, and so everyone in the audience, stock up on your favorite libation. Um, I want at least one professional crier uh, at my funeral. If you've never been to a black funeral, uh, maybe maybe go to a black funeral and see how it's done in a like a black baptist church i i want one or two professional criers on video um okay not doing that job <laughs> i didn't ask for it's you. it's open you, you would not be able to do it uh good enough uh it would be unbelievable i would be displeased if you were the crier at my funeral <laughs> Well, we we have we have achieved unity. <laughs> um, I I want um, I want at least one of the women in the audience on on video to to show a boob. I mean, I'm sorry, I'll see it in my ghostly form, but I I want it to be so outrageous 
you know, like a rock concert. Um, so someone Mardi should, Gras. Mardi so, Gras. Yeah, Mardi Gras. Yeah. I mean, this, yeah. you think that I'm being disgusting. This happens all the time in celebrations <laughs> in, in my country. Uh, so, um, and once again, having been a stage performer, I want to see a nipple. Some, someone, it doesn't have to be on screen long. <laughs> and it can't be. That's why you're really carrying your laptop with you. It has nothing to do with writing. Posts. <laughs> well, I do. I do want this wake to happen while I'm still alive. I, I want to be there. Um, uh, you know, I I want uh, someone. I, I think uh, someone unlikely to make a drunken and inappropriate speech. I'm going Anthony 66 on this one. Because Anthony 66 strikes me as a man who is who, who is not unfamiliar with a Chinese beer. Um, uh, the but, person you want to do it is Matthew Taylor. No, because everyone can imagine Matthew drunk. Um, I want it to be someone unlikely, unlikely. So nobody <laughs> thinks it's Teddy either. No, it's not Teddy. <laughs> Teddy's drunk right now. What are you talking about? Um, I want it to be someone who has a an air uh, of distinction about him, who who becomes very strangely inappropriate for this event. That's that's why I'm thinking Anthony sixty six. Uh, Jim, once again, Jim is. Jim is Jim is writing three inappropriate comments right now. Every no one, no one would be surprised by that. <laughs> so um, it's either got to be Anthony sixty six or Brian with an eye. Mm, could could be could be Brian with an eye. Yeah, not could Brian with an eye. Once again, not a shot. No, Everybody no, expects no. that. <laughs> so no, um, and and Jim is the Jim is the kind of guy who would who would just readily tell you he likes a little blood in his alcohol system. You know, sure. <laughs> sure. It, can't, so, it, can't, it can't be Jim. Um, uh, by the way, Jim, I hope you're listening. I wonder how you are. I haven't seen anything from you. I would, I, would like a, I would like a musical performance. And by that, I mean mm. a song, maybe a group That's, song, like a, like a drinking song. Uh, Als Bublin Klein uh comes to mind that's uh, uh yeah, i think our buddy tyler b is a uh, a guitarist so okay maybe yeah i guitarist. so i want at least uh a song at this wake uh in the background uh played way too loud i want inappropriately a football game uh being played uh it doesn't matter who it does need to be american football tyler that shit is not football shut up Stop it. I don't want that crap at my wake. No, he's, he's talking about the football that they play where feet are rarely involved in contact with the ball. He's just talking about that football. Um, American football. Okay, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. Uh, no, someone's going to have to be in game. charge of organizing this thing if it comes to I, that. I'm, I'm putting on the football game, and it's going to be Canadian League. No, I said football. <laughs> I said football, okay? <laughs> Canadian League is not football. Arena football is not football. Stop it. Hey, um, look, I'll put on a tie game for you. Okay, good. Good. Not That's one real that they lost. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, no, I'll even, I'll even put on a, a winning Alabama game for you. Good. Because I just don't have time to look for the losing ones. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't lost one in a long time. So, um, yeah. So, look, uh, death is a is a nasty thing. Um, it, it, it's the dying that's the nasty thing. And so, if it is something like cancer, I I do hope it's early enough so that they can catch it. Because uh, there are few um, diseases that scare me. But cancer scares me. I've just seen it yeah. uh, often enough. And when it has its way, there's no help. There's no power on heaven or earth that can uh, save you from the ravages of it. And um, I, I want no part of that particular shit show. Um, so, you know, if, if they can do some things before 
gets uh, to that, that would be really great. Um, but if it does, if it does get to that, uh, yeah, I'd like to think that there were four or five people in the world who remembered me well and who had an inappropriate party online. <laughs> so. I'll schedule the Zoom call. You, you need not. Uh, you need not worry. Yeah. Well, I, I, won't, I will. I, even I won't actually be it. able to, will I? <laughs> no, no. Look, I, I will. I will even schedule it on a paid account so that it doesn't time out after forty-five yeah. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> And uh, and I want some super follows. <laughs> so. Okay, I'm afraid in this case that that means like people jump off a bridge or whatever. <laughs> I'm not sure what it means, but I didn't get any of those in life. God damn it! So, <laughs> so uh, that said, yeah, I um, I I've been trying to get out of this conversation for an hour now. So um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go to work and um, watch Tom Brady do his thing. And um, we'll do this again sometime. Uh, so thanks and um, ciao.